Hey guys, Derek Check is here with Team Align, and today I wanted to show you guys some tips and tricks for the T-Rex 700 Nitro. Uh, over the past few months and weeks, I've read on the forums and I've seen at events of guys having issues with their clutches breaking or their starter shafts slipping and all these other sort of things revolving around the transmission assembly within the Align Nitro helicopter series. And I just want to take some time to show you some things that I do personally when I put together my uh, clutch bell and starter shaft assembly to ensure that I have the longest lasting clutch life and to ensure that my starter shaft doesn't slip. Uh, the tips and tricks I'm going to show you today apply to the older T-Rex 600 Nitros and 700 Nitros as well as the newer DFC models. Uh, the transmission assembly hasn't really changed that much. So uh, first we're going to go over some of the components I'm going to use during the assembly and then I'm going to show you some things I do with the clutch bell, pinion, uh, the bearings that go on there and the liner and then I'm going to wrap up the video showing you some things I do with the starter shaft assembly so I hope you guys enjoy the video so the first thing we're going to go over today is some of the parts that we're going to use during this video I have here a Align 700 clutch bill with the liner installed I have a clutch I have the starter coupling. I have our starter shaft. Uh, we have our castle nut. We have our clutch bell housing. We have our bearings for the clutch stack up. And we also have the pinion over here. Uh, we're going to go over some of the tips and tricks with each of these components uh, starting right here with the clutch bell. So let's go on to that. Starting with the clutch bell here. Oh, one issue I want to go over that I see a lot is guys running way too large of a gap between their clutch and the clutch liner and clutch bell here. Uh, what happens when you have too large of a gap is the clutch shoes here, when you're spooling up, will have to extend out further. And over time, this fatigues the material and can result in these shoes just cracking off, basically. Um, some of the clutch bells with the old black line liner really had a problem with that because they the liner was just way too thin. Uh, Align did release a blue liner but the important thing to check for is to make sure your liner is about one millimeter thick. So the, the width of this liner here, if you took some calipers to it, is one millimeter right now. Um, if the liner you have to replace uh, into the clutch belt isn't one millimeter, you could space it out with some paper or a part of a coke can or something like that to use as a shim but I found that having about a one millimeter thick liner in the bell yields about a eight thousand seven eight thousands gap um, between the clutch and the liner as I'll show you in a second here um, and that I found to work the best for the 700 nitro uh, that minimizes the amount of a deflection this clutch shoe has during operation so it fatigues it less and results in the clutch lasting much longer so some tips when you're replacing your clutch uh, I usually use like an exacto knife to cut all of the liner material out of the bell first that's kinda like my first initial pass and then I'll go back through again with a dremel tool using a sanding belt or a sanding drum and kinda clean up all the epoxy and residue that might be underneath the liner in here and just kinda roughen it up a little bit just kinda lightly you don't want to go crazy and take away too much material but you want to get it nice and rough um, that will allow the 30 minute epoxy that we're going to use to set up and grab onto the material a little bit better um, and I found that works really good so once you have your liner and you have your old one removed you're going to want to fit the new liner into the bell here uh, if, as you can see maybe it might be a little bit tough to see in the video but there's a gap right in between here and you can just barely see it because the liner has been fit very tightly uh, into the clutch bill here so as you're cutting or trimming whatever liner you purchased you want to make sure that when you put the liner in you kind of have to press it into the clutch bill you don't want it to just kind of like flop in and then you have a big gap right here that's no good uh, once you have the clutch liner at the appropriate length you can then remove the liner we're going to take our clutch, wrap a single layer of electrical tape around the outer circumference of the clutch, and then we're going to 
put a very thin layer of 30 minute epoxy all the way around the OD, or excuse me, the ID of the clutch bell, and then put our liner back in. And then we take our clutch with the electrical tape installed, and we would put it into the clutch bell like so. And that electrical tape will set the perfect seven to eight thousandths gap on either side of the clutch. And this will result, once it's fully cured and you get it pulled out and all assembled, you'll have a very long lasting clutch. It might be a little grabby for the first few flights, but it will wear in after about 15 or so flights. And then you'll be, you'll be good. You'll probably notice that your clutch will actually engage maybe at about 25% throttle or so. And that, that really helps uh, make this aligned clutch last a lot longer. Um, if you're currently flying your 700 and you know, when you do your initial spool up, it's not spooling up to like 50, 60, or 70% throttle, then you have way too much of a gap. And I can guarantee you that your clutch is going to break very quickly. So that about covers the clutch bell. Uh, on the next segment, we're going to start going over assembling the pinion and doing the clutch bell bearing block. So for this next part of the video, I wanted to go over installing the bearings onto the clutch bell and pinion. So as you can see, I've already installed the pinion onto the clutch bell. And what is really important here is to make sure you use some type of shaft retainer Loctite on this sleeve on the pinion. This prevents the pinion from spinning on the inner race of these radial bearings. And what can happen if you don't do it is if the the sleeve in here is allowed to spin in the inner race here as this is rotating in flight. The steel sleeve of the bearing will actually wear down this sleeve here. And over time this will create slop and you'll have the clutch bell will actually be able to rock within the housing. And we don't want that because potentially it could lead to gear stripping issues or other things. We want to keep this clutch bell nice and tight in the clutch bell housing. So I usually put just a very thin layer of Loctite 609. Uh, you could also use the Align R48 shaft retainer. Either one will work. And you want to put a very thin layer around this sleeve and then slide on your first bearing. Again, you don't want to slobber it on here because as you slide it down, it's a pretty tight fit. So the ID of the bearing will pull all the Loctite down to the bottom and then it'll kind of pull the bottom and could run into the bearing. So we want to keep it nice and thin. And on that same note, as we slide this down, it's probably going to pull a lot of that Loctite down. So I typically, after I got this first one secured, will put another thin layer very carefully because now you have the bearing on here and you don't want any of it to run into the inner race. Uh, around the sleeve and then I'll install my second bearing onto here and at that point you can just put some blue Loctite on here throw it on your castle nut and you will have a completed clutch bell pinion assembly here ready to go on the clutch bell housing so the next segment we'll go over the clutch bell housing so we've got our clutch bell housing here and we have our uh, clutch bell assembly and I want to show you some things I do when I put this assembly together as well. So the first thing is we want to prevent these two radial bearings on the pinion support from wearing down the plastic housing. So what I usually do here is I will put a very thin layer of CA uh, in the section here where the clutch bell pinions will, or excuse me, the radial bearings will ride. And you want to just make a nice, very thin, doesn't have to be a lot. And I only do it really on one side usually. I don't find it necessary to secure both. So that the radial bearings here can't spin inside this housing. Again, over time, the steel outer race here in this case can wear down the plastic material just through heat, friction. This thing's spinning at 17,000 RPMs in here. Um, and that will lead to that same kind of slop I was talking about earlier. So that's why it's important to put a little bit of medium CA in here, very thin, and then install install our clutch bell into the housing. And at that point, you could also put in one of the starter shaft support bearings. Uh, same thing, usually I put a very thin layer of CA in there, and then I'll go ahead and put the bearing into the housing. And then I will put the other half of the housing on there and let the CA all dry. You could also take the starter shaft and install it just to kind of keep everything lined up in there. Uh, it'll help a little bit with that and then we'll just let it sit and let the CA dry. Uh, next we're going to go over some things with the starter shaft and that will conclude this video. Okay guys, so the last thing I want to go over here is the starter shaft. 
I've seen some guys have issues with the coupling here actually slipping on the starter shaft and this winds up grinding up the starter shaft here kind of mauls it all up and then it's very difficult to get the starter coupling to not slip again so one thing that I usually recommend doing to kind of help out these two set screws here really dig into the shaft is I'll take a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and just kind of use the cutoff wheel to make a nice flat spot right where these detents in the shaft are. Um, this helps the starter shaft set screws or really dig into the shaft a lot better than the little uh, uh, blind holes that kind of have drilled in here right now. Um, and since I've been doing that, I've never had an issue with the starter coupling shaft slipping. So it's very easy to do. Just take a Dremel cutoff wheel and kind of grind a flat spot here and 90 degrees away from it at the other detent as well. And then you should be able to, when you have this installed in your clutch bell, make sure that with the starter coupling all the way down, you can still see the flats on there. And then just simply put your set screws in and you should be good to go. And you shouldn't have any slipping issues with the starter coupling on the shaft anymore. Um, definitely something I recommend for both the 700 and 600 Nitro.